keep winning. <laughs>we don't spend a lot of time in caravan parks but this one is a worthy mention it's Mandalay Holiday Park the joint's massive and due to all the rain we've experienced lately um, we've decided to camp up here for three nights dry everything out use our laundromat all that stuff have a go at this heated pools slides they actually won awards for here um, a couple of years ago and quite well deserved I must say this is the biggest cleanest most kept park that I have ever seen just little things like look at this it's a bike station and all the tools you need to do some uh, quick bike repairs including a pump speaking of bikes when we pulled in yesterday they have a lot of staff here and a staff member grabs one of the push bikes and he escorts you down to your site it's unbelievable and a very cute little caravan cafe <laughs>
Well, here you go, we've arrived at Fremantle. What do you do at Fremantle? You visit the jail. Of course you do. It's one of the biggest attractions here in Fremantle, and I've uh, heard a lot about it, but being never being to Perth, I've obviously never visited the jail either. So, uh, she looks old. We've bought a tour for the Behind, Behind Bars tour. It goes for about an hour and 15. And uh, it's a cold day here in Fremantle, so the weather will suit the tour, I'm sure. Apparently you get a really good look inside. They've stopped the underground tour, which is flooded with water, and you go through parts of it in canoes, the whole bit. It's about a kilometre uh, across the township, 20 metres down. They've stopped it due to COVID, so can't do that today, unfortunately. That would have been really good. But we'll get ourselves in there and uh, go and have a look. So we've stopped in at the National Park and looked at the Pinnacles. The Pinnacles is about 200 kilometres north of Perth. Uh, it's hard to explain. They're like little um, shards of rocks, thousands of them sticking out of the sandy desert, and the the, um, the sand's a real unusual colour. Not to be silly about it, but I think if you went to Mars and walked around the red planet, it would look something like this terrain, I'm not kidding. Very odd.
It's called an elf. It's not a Winnebago. It's a grey import from Japan. You very rarely see those on the road. Actually, this is the first one. I was aware of them when I was looking to buy ours, our Isuzu. Uh, they're never brought to Australia from Japan, so making them a grey import. And they're tiny, but they are very cute and very, very well, well laid out inside. I'll give you a look around. Peter's from New South Wales, actually. What's the length of this, Peter? She's five metres long. It's even got a ladder at the back. Almost looks like a little Mr. Whippy van. Uh, Peter was just telling me they're built for the snow. So they're all wheel drive. And I've only ever seen, really, a couple of these for sale all through Australia. They're perfect for a couple, and inside was surprisingly very well laid out. So there you go. The Isuzu Elf 150 all-wheel drive. Very compact. Having a lazy night tonight, I want to ask you, when's the last time you saw a KFC bucket? I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid. But there she is, in Geraldton, Western Australia, having a night off cooking. <laughs> We're at Geraldton Park, live band here. It turns out, every Sunday from 4.30 to 7. We got here at 4.30. Good morning. If you look over here, we had a massive storm hit us last night. I've never heard thunder like it. It was unbelievable. We're actually at a um, free camp spot. It's in the township. It's near a shipping yard. So they've got a train that provides the ships with containers and it was shunting all night. Uh, shunting meaning the train carriages pushing up one another and it's so loud. Went to one o'clock this morning. All the joys of free camping. <sighs> and to top it off, we have our first flat tyre. Actually, it's my first flat tyre ever. 
in all my years and in all my miles. I'll show you. Wake up to it this morning. <laughs> That's a flat tyre, all right. So, uh, this morning, Jessica's at the dentist. Finally got her in to a uh, local dentist here at uh, Geraldton. And I'll be going to a tyre centre. So, a bit going on today. That's all right though. It's all part of being on the road. All of these people are helping us. Absolutely unbelievable, the travelling community. Adam and Tash went to help us with a compressor. Unbeknownst to them, it wasn't working. So then this big rig pulls up, brings out his big compressor. However, he's missing a part. So his friend over here in the fifth wheeler is getting some nipple or end piece to go on the end of it. Madness. It's just funny. Well, we're in Geraldton. We went down to tyre power and got the tyre fixed. Look, for the record, I've got wheel braces and bottle jacks and breaker bars and all the stuff to do it. But let me tell you, it's a pain in the ass. I can do it if I'm really, really, really desperate. But all the Isuzu tyre changing stuff is good. But you've got to make it come past the Winnebago body, um, and you can do it, but it's it's uh, yeah, it's, dip, it's quite difficult. So if someone could just pump my tire up and run down a tire power and get it fixed, that, that's what happened this morning. So tire fixed, back on the road, and while I was at it, I bought a vacuum cleaner because that's what you do when you're travelling. You get tires fixed and buy vacuum cleaners. Look at this, free campground, stay as long as you want. This is our second night actually. Probably stay longer. And yeah, we're just hanging around Geraldton. Um, not doing much at all. Enjoying the fine weather. That's what we're doing. Adam and Tasha here. I spoke about this couple in our last video. Uh, the the, the um, Adam who does wind turbines. They're here with us. They've been here a couple of nights. And we met, not bus life, another bus life couple, retirees, Faye and Les. Check this out. That's a, that's a coach, actually, not a bus. And a fifth wheeler. You should see inside this thing. It's homemade from scratch, from a thought in his head, that fifth wheeler there. Here we are, I'll take you over to the crowd. Campfire going. And some good conversations, I'm sure. <laughs> It'll be very good conversations. It's a laugh a minute. So here we are. We might we might move here, Faith, and just live here. Okay. Stuff it. Might. Just live here. There's worse places. Oh, there's worse places in the world, mate. <laughs> Digger.
believe what we've come across. A pet cemetery. I've never heard of such concept, to be really honest, certainly not in Australia. And it's massive. It's just like a cemetery, but for pets. I cannot believe how many headstones are here and how many little graves. And they're dating back 30 years ago, some of the oldest ones. It's a private property and um, quite a quirky little business for the, this family that live on this, this um, property. I'll go and show you some of the headstones. It's, uh, look, it's a fact of life. Uh, we've lost pets too over the years and the kids have had to deal with it. It's just part of the process of life, unfortunately. And so is pet ownership. Look, uh, pets are great, but oh my God, sometimes pet ownership sucks. And for all you guys out there that have had pets and have had to do the unthinkable, I'm sure you know where I'm coming from. But uh, I'm really shocked. I thought this was the sort of thing that you see in America, but clearly if there's 30 year old headstones here, it's, um, it's been a thing for a long time. But I'll give you a look around. A viewer discretion advised. If um, the passing away of your pets that you loved might invoke some uh, negative emotions or thoughts about where we are, um, you can skip ahead. I understand why. Sunshine, show me the good times. Tell me that the world's been spinning since the beginning, and everything will be alright.